In this House of Logic video, we're going to have a look at the Proxmox API and how to get started uh, using this. What we have here is our Proxmox cluster, and if you've followed any of the previous videos, you've already seen me go through the process of setting up users. So I'd recommend that you go through and at least set yourself up a user. Um, I'd probably go with a VM admin um, level of, um, of access in order to do this for a bit of testing at least. Um, what you want to do is you want to go to API tokens on the cluster and in there you're going to go to add and you're going to go and select the user you want to use. Now we're going to use user2 because this has already been set up in a group which has been given uh, effectively VM admin status and we want a token ID. Now the token ID it is a random string and it needs to be um, 24 characters I believe and uh, consists of uppercase and lowercase and numbers. It doesn't particularly like punctuation as I understand it. So let's pop that one in there and we're going to hit add. Now what we need to do is we need to copy out the details that we've got from this add process as they are only shown once. So we will copy out the user and we're going to copy the secret value as well. So let's pop that one in there. Okay, and uh, that actually does, if you if you'd notice that one, if you're familiar with uh, anything in um, uh, the Microsoft uh, ecosystem, it does look startlingly like um, what we would term a GUID. It may in fact be a GUID as... Uh, um, uh, in that um, format, um, but certainly it's uh, <laughs> sort of threw me when I was looking at this and thought it had been generated by Microsoft. Um, so once you've got that, you can then close the dialog. Now what you need to do is you need to uh, go and get hold of um, something that you will use to connect with. Now we're going to do this in two ways today. So we're going to use Postman first of all, which is a third party application, which is very useful for exploring APIs. And if you want to get hold of that, you can go to postman.com forward slash downloads and then download it. Um, we've had a look at the um, the Postman, uh, sorry, uh, the Proxmox API, and there are various examples of how to uh, access and um, some examples of the agent libraries. But we're going to go for a fairly straightforward connection uh, to this, just using uh, REST calls. And um, if we have a look, first of all, what we need to do is actually go and get an access ticket. Now to do this, what you need to do to start with is you need, well, first of all, with Postman installed, um, you need to go and create a new post request. You're going to give it the address of the Proxmox cluster or host that you're talking to, colon 8006 for the port, and then API2, JSON, access, and ticket. <coughs> excuse me, all separated as such. Um, within the um, form, the XWWW form URL encoded body, you want to specify your username at PVE, um, which is the user we're using in this instance, um, and you're going to give it the password. So I've given away the password, the really rotten one that Chrome doesn't like, um, so <laughs> you wouldn't want to be using this in real life, um, but you use the username and the password. And when you've done those, what you can then do is you can then hit send to send it to the API, and you should get a status 200 OK response code. Now, it's worth noting when I did that, that there is no additional authorization set on there. There's nothing particularly interesting in terms of these headers. These are the, this is me showing the entirety of what's set in Postman. It is down to what you put in the um, the form encode, form URL encoded, I should say, um, body with the username and password. Now, when this responds, it's coming back with a ticket and a CSRF prevention token. Now, you're going to need both of these. So what you want to do to actually talk to the API proper with the um, with the actual um, ticket is you want to take a copy of the prevention token and you want to go and create a fresh um, uh, tab within Postman for a new request, which we've already done, and that is the API2 JSON version uh, endpoint that we're going to test with. Now. Underneath the headers now, so not in body, but in headers, you want to create a header key called CSRF prevention token. And for the value of this, so this is when I was testing this out previously, you want to go and pop in the value that you've just taken from the ticket. The other thing that you need to do, so going back to the original request, let's just pop out of that go back to here, is you want to go and get the ticket value. Now you can take everything between the double quotes back to where it says PVE user and has some other 
uh, user two, sorry, and has some other details. So we're going to copy everything out of that. Then we're going to go back to the um, the new request, and we're going to go to cookies. Now what you've got to do here is you have to type in the domain name of the cookie you're going to add. So I've already done that. So you just would, in this case, type in um, 192.168.5.225. So you don't need the port number on the end. And you want to create the cookie and set the cookie value, sorry, the cookie name to um, PVE auth cookie. And then with an equal sign, you then want to pop in the value of the ticket that you have gotten from the first request. Uh, so that is without the double quotes and goes after the equal sign and down to um, a semicolon. Then you've got a path and then at the end um, there should be, so if you're creating a new um, new ticket, there will be an expiry or expires um, value on there. So that is currently set for um, 8.15 um, this evening. In fact, that's uh, no, it's twenty twenty five. It's next year. <laughs> um, okay, so we will um, uh, we will actually go and save that at this point. So with that saved, you can close that, um, and then we're going to go and hit send, and this should hopefully authorize itself and get us back a response as to what the version of Proxmox currently is. So if we hit send on there, there we go. We have status two hundred. We have the data um, uh, section of this JSON object come back and it says release is 8.2 and it's got a version of 8.2.2 which is the version that we're running. Which we can easily see if we hop back here. So there we go, that's how you will get started with, um, with Postman. And that's all very well and good, but you're probably saying to yourself, well, why would I bother doing that? Um, well, you might want to go and test some specific values. There might be something that you need to change in there just as a one-off. Um, but realistically, probably what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to automate something. Um, so I've used PowerShell for doing this, and uh, I, I like PowerShell um, on Windows machines because it comes pre-installed and it's, uh, it's very easy to get up and running with. Um, and there's a few bits and pieces that you need to do. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to link to this script uh, in the comments of the video. But if I talk you through it quickly, the first section is effectively a function that says go and ignore the fact that the certificate is self-signed. So I'm not going to go through that in any great detail. And also to set the protocol to talk to, uh, to Proxmox to be um, TLS 1.2. So it's on a modern um, and more secure protocol. So, and then we've got this ignore function, as I mentioned, to uh, to actually ignore the self-signed certificates. Um, normally what you would do in a script is that you would actually parameterize these, but I've left them in so it's nice and easy to actually see. So we have a Proxmox host, we have um, a username, so, so the script may be slightly different when I, I put in some parameterization around this, but um, um, yeah, I will uh, I will uh, will share the script, but it's um, it will do exactly the same thing. So we've got the uh, the host, we've got the username, we've got the password, we have the node name of the host that the uh, the VM that we're going to look at is running on, and we have the virtual machine ID. So going back to the uh, the Proxmox instance, we can see here that uh, Pi Desktop is VM ID one hundred and is currently in paused status. So as we go down here, um, the first thing we're going to do is to recreate the, uh, the bit of logic that goes and gets the ticket. So we've got the same details here. So we're having API2, JSON access ticket. We're going to create a ticket request body, which by default in PowerShell is the um, XWWW form URL encoded anyway. So we're going to use the username and password values within there. And this is case sensitive. Uh, I spent some time earlier on today going under, trying to understand why it wasn't working. And I realized that I'd left some capitalization on those. So it is very definitely case sensitive. So that's going to go and get the uh, the ticket. Um, it then comes back with the ticket response if it's successful. And then what we do is we parse the actual information out. So we get the, from the ticket response, we get the data, and we pull out the CSRF token. And with those, we're then able to go and do some other requests. So if what I do at this point is I'll just put a breakpoint on here, and then we can talk through the rest of the script. So I can simply hit go on this, and it should show us. So ticket response has already run. And by hovering over, you can see there that we have the details. So on the ticket response on data, if we hover over that, that's telling us we have a username, we have a ticket, and um, as we step through this, if we press F10, then we can see we have the CSRF prevention token, 
and the ticket value will also come out as well. So there we go, there's the full ticket value. So if you remember, one of these has to go into the header and the other one has to go into the, um, into the actual um, request uh, details. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we are going to use, um, uh, sorry, to the cookies I meant to say. Um, we're gonna set up the cookies using a new system.net uh, cookie object giving it the name PVE auth cookie as before, as we saw in, um, in Postman, path of forward slash, and there we can set the value of the cookie to be ticket. We specify the domain being the Proxmox host, and we've uh, we've made up an expiry date here. So in, in this case, I've only chosen 12 hours, but you could choose to add days and do 365 if you so wanted. Um, excuse me once more. <coughs> uh, and what you then do, onto the session, so we created a session on the initial um, section up here. On the session, we then add the cookie um, with the uh, the details from that particular ticket. Um, now the headers is just down here, so we're setting the CSRF prevention token, and at this point, we should then be able to go and run the next request. So if I put the breakpoint there by pressing F9 on the next section for the API response, I can then press F5 and we'll skip down to there. So we're ready to go. We've got the header, which has got the value on it. We have the session, which should have uh, the cookie details. And we can then press F10, and hopefully this should be successful. Uh, it appears to have been successful because we can see we've got an API response. And the API response has come back with a version, if you notice there. So we'll go and see if we can print that out. So that's printing out uh, using right host the um, uh, PVE version number. Now at this point we're going to actually uh, exit out of that script. So that's that's finished. That's that's recreated the behavior in PowerShell that we've just gone through in Postman. Um, you might be wondering, um, well, how is this in, in any way useful? Well, that's it's not useful in its uh, in particularly useful in its current form. Um, but what you would want to do is work out what different actions you'd want to take. So I mentioned it in passing earlier on um, that Proxmox uh, uses REST, um, which stands for Representative State Transfer. So by using the different actual um, uh, verbs, if you will, of REST, you can actually cause different actions to take place. So if we go underneath uh, no the nodes section here, for example, in the Proxmox um, API documentation, what we can find is, I believe it's under, I'm never quite sure how to pronounce it. It's either Kemu or Quemu. Um, we can find we have Kemu, the emulator, and then underneath there we can have a virtual machine ID, and we can find the status. So for each virtual machine, <coughs> we can go and see what the current status of it is by doing an HTTPS GET um, on that particular endpoint. So this is telling it is us it is API two JSON nodes the node name, Quemu, the VM ID, status, and current. So if we do a uh, an invoke rest method get, we should be able to recover that information. So that's what we're gonna do next. So if we go back, and in fact, we, we'll, I'll explain the rest of it. So, um, so what we're actually going to do is we're gonna find the status, and if it's not in a running state, we're either going to tell it to resume, if it's paused, which is uh, this endpoint here, which uses a post, uh, or to make it start if it's actually stopped. So again, that's a post method and it's forward slash st uh, status forward slash start for the start and status forward slash resume for the resume. So going back, let's pop ourselves there so we're ready to see the results. If we go back to the script now and we will get rid of this uh, exit line which aborts the script early. So we will now go through and do that again, but we'll put a breakpoint down here and we'll walk through the rest. Okay, so we have the ticket response data from the earlier section. We can remove that breakpoint now. We know what's going on with that. And we've uh, we've got getting the version. So again, we don't need that breakpoint either. And we hit F5. So okay, so we've now gone past where we were previously. We're printing out the version still. But for the next section, this is where we're going to go and get the current status of VMID 100. So using all of that stuff, we put the base URI together, which says, if you note there, um, it does say uh, ID 100. And we'll try that um, request. So we'll see what this comes back with. So we have API response 2, 
And if we go and look at what that says for QMP status, and I've made a note there that it's different from the main status, so that says paused. So it's now going to output that information. So now at this point, we're going to do yet another rest call. And this rest call is going to take some action if it's not in a running state. So our status here is not equal to running. So are we going to do a startup? Well, at the moment, that's saying false. So if the VM status equals paused, our URI ends in status and then resume. We set the do startup value to true. And then we drop to the next section where what we're going to do is we are going to set the start body, which is the same for both requests with the node name and the VM ID. And we're going to go and call that particular endpoint. And if you note here, the method is post rather than get from earlier up the, up the script. And we'll see what that does. So that now is has run. And it's come back and it said up ID, PVE1, and then some uh, ID values. And it said QM resume 100 and then a username. Now, if we go back to Proxmox, which is lurking on another window, we can see that Pi Desktop has been started, and we can see here that it says PVE uh, two. Well, user at PVE, user to it PVE has told it to resume. Fantastic! So it's uh, it's up and running. So what if we now stop that machine? We can do exactly the same again, and it should pick it up in a different status. So at this point, we will run the script yet again once we've seen that this has stopped. There we go, it stopped, and we can go back to our script, and then we can run it again. So it should drop all the way through to here. In fact, we can put a breakpoint on the equals stopped, which I'm expecting it to stay. So we can take that breakpoint off there. So I'm pressing F9 to toggle the breakpoints, if you're not familiar with this. Uh, F10 to step through the code. So the status says stopped, so we're going to use the start endpoint. We said to do start up is true, and we're going to go through the same thing again, and we're going to tell it to start up. And we have a response. It's another um, update ID, or up ID, and it's got another ID, and it's again saying, but this time it's saying QM start. So if we go back to Proxmox, it might be a slight graphical, I oh know it's, uh, it's beaten me to it this time. It didn't. I beat the uh, UI earlier on when I tested this, and so that's already starting up again. Um, and that's basically how the script works. The uh, the final piece of this is if we just run it a final time, we'll see that it should drop all the way through the code. It won't stop on this breakpoint because the status is running, and we'll just get an output that says VM running, no action to take. There we go. Um, so this is this is in a nutshell how you can actually use uh, the API in Proxmox to uh, to automate different actions. Um, as you saw, there are various IDs and bits and pieces that you needed to set up. Once you set them up, though, um, you don't need to actually call um, those uh, those particular um, GUIDs. But I would, uh, or sorry, those particular IDs and secret keys and tokens and so on. Um, keep them to hand. You may need them in future for other API actions, but certainly for making REST calls of this nature, um, you don't directly need them. Um, and uh, yeah, it's uh, it's up and running. Obviously, in the comments, if you know where you, where you actually need them for, then um, and please do, uh, <laughs> do comment, and maybe that's something else we can uh, explore in future. But this is just what I've managed to, uh, to put together today. Um, so the idea for this kind of thing, of course, is if you wanted to do any particular action, if there's maybe some things, if you've been using VMware as an equivalent, you could, uh, if you wanted to automatically move things from one place to another, provided you're uh, supplying the right values, you could automatically handle migrations, or if you've got a large estate and you're deciding that you need to evacuate an entire host in order to power it off for maintenance or something again that's something that you could uh, that you could script um but yeah the the full api is um is part of the main proxmox documentation um it's worth going to have a have a look through that and working out what it is you uh, you want to do so um there's there's loads and loads of different um, subsections to this of course and we've just focused on one of them today one that's um, that's quite easy to uh, to visually demonstrate um but there we go um but yeah that's uh, that's about it for now um thanks very much for watching please um like subscribe and uh, if you have any comments about this um then feel free to post them um i will share the script and uh, i will amend it so that it doesn't have these values quite so uh, so hard coded within here um yeah that's that about wraps it up for now so thanks for watching and um, we'll catch you next time bye now